Please watch out for this. President Biden is pushing for new tax reform. Experts say that this proposal would help address the United States' growing debt, but also target wealthier Americans. The Federal Reserve has also announced plans that would force major banks to make big changes. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for the latest breaking news in Congress. Also, every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please make sure that you click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. I want to echo the fact that our, our commodity markets and our capital markets are a huge national asset, and we need them to be functioning well and with as little friction as possible. I, I, I now understand that what you're referring to is the things that were done to in increase capital requirements for various kinds of derivative activities. And I'll just say that's, that's an area where we're aware of the concerns and it's an area that we're taking a, a very close look at. I appreciate that. I was a member of the Dodd-Frank Conference Committee where there was bipartisan support to not disadvantage end users, farmers, ranchers, small businesses. This had broad bipartisan support then and still does today. Unfortunately, the Fed could undermine this longstanding work done by Congress. I'd like to enter a few letters into the record, Mr. Chairman, that discuss the detrimental impact to end users. First, a joint uh, agricultural trade association letter from the American Farm Bureau Federation, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, among seven others. Next, a joint energy trade association letter from the American Gas Association and four others. And lastly, a letter from the American Public Power Association and the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Powell. I'd now like to focus on how the proposal is set to significantly disincentivize banks from offering clearing services. In Dodd-Frank, Congress mandated central clearing as a way to reduce risk in the system. The number of banks that can clear derivatives for end users has reduced over time, making it harder for end users to find a bank to offer this service. There are some estimates that the Fed's proposal will increase capital for this activity by 80%. I'm worried that this will make it even harder for end users to find a bank to clear their hedges. This also comes at a time when the SEC, our friends at the Securities and Exchange Commission, has just finalized a rule in December that will increase clearing in uh, cost in treasury markets. This will have a real impact on market access and liquidity, not just in commodities, but the $26 trillion treasury market that plays a critical role in the world economy. Will you work with the CFTC to address this problem? Uh, I, again, I'll say that we're, we're, we're aware of those concerns and we're prepared to work with other agencies and also to make sure that our capital proposal uh, appropriately addresses them. Now, friends, President Biden's recent State of the Union address highlighted the United States' economic performance, framing it as a significant comeback amidst ongoing challenges. However, Biden also emphasized a need for tax reforms targeting wealthy individuals and corporations to support the middle class and address the country's ballooning debt. Biden's proposal to hike taxes on corporations and billionaires garnered praise from economists as a potential source of much-needed revenue to tackle the growing national debt. The plan includes a billionaire's tax imposing a minimum 25% tax on the nation's wealthiest individuals, aiming to generate an estimated $500 billion over the next decade. Economists view this measure as a sensible approach to raising revenue without significantly impacting economic output. During his speech, Biden highlighted the necessity of ensuring that economic prosperity is shared by all segments of society stating, when they do well, the poor have a way up, and the wealthy still do very well. We all do well. The United States faces a staggering $34 trillion debt, projected to increase by an additional $20 trillion by 2033, posing one of the nation's most significant long-term challenges. Experts stress 
the importance of proposals that generate revenue without stifling economic activity. Considering the magnitude of the debt crisis, Biden's proposal to raise a corporate tax rate to 28 percent and establish a minimum tax for large corporations at 21 percent also received favorable response from economists. So while these measures aim to generate extra revenue, concerns linger about potential adverse effects on economic performance if corporations choose to relocate overseas to avoid higher taxes. However, efforts to coordinate these tax reforms with other countries' global minimum corporate tax rates may mitigate such risks. Despite concerns, a White House official dismissed worries about corporations moving abroad, citing efforts to establish a global corporate tax minimum. Moreover, there is little evidence to suggest that previous tax cut under the former president effectively stimulated domestic business investment. According to Yahoo News, Biden's tax proposals signal a shift towards prioritizing tax fairness and generating revenue to address critical economic challenges. While economists acknowledge potential risks associated with tax hikes, they view these measures as necessary steps towards ensuring fiscal sustainability in the long run. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell announced plans to revise a sweeping bank regulatory proposal by the end of this year marking a potential win for large banks that have opposed the proposed changes. The proposal was introduced last summer by the Fed and other regulatory bodies among its provisions. The rule would mandate that banks, with assets exceeding $100 billion, maintain higher reserves to cushion against potential losses from bad loans and other risks. However, major banks have pushed back against the proposal arguing they could hinder their lending capacity and surpass the requirements outlined in global banking standards. During his testimony before the Senate Banking Committee, Jerome Powell acknowledged the potential impact of the proposal on mortgage lending, stating that there is a risk of reduction in this area, which the Fed is closely monitoring. Powell reiterated his intention to make significant provisions to the proposed rule, indicating that the Fed aims to reach consensus on the revamped proposals by the end of this year. Well, my awesome and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. My dear friends, thank you so much for being part of this community. The winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway is Evelyn Miller and Rose Towery. Congratulations, my dearish friends. To claim your gift cards, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or, my dear friends, you could message me on my Facebook page. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed weekend.